Retiring early can be one of your biggest mistakes, says Larry Kotlikoff. The author of the consumption smoothing methodology uh, is coming out with this piece of crap. And we're going to dive in. I just, look, I just did a video on this, how disappointing this is. I don't actually think he wrote this. No way. Because the guy or lady, probably a lady who wrote it, obviously did the background about Larry Kolokoff. So here's Spend to the End. All right. So this is one of the best books on retirement planning you'll ever find. There's Larry and Scott Burns. Scott Burns took a turn out to be a big green weenie, which frustrates me to no end, too. But uh, Scott Burns, out of Dallas, you're like, oh, my goodness, we're all going to die of carbon dioxide. It's freaking idiotic, and I, I'm sick of this, man. Um, but it's a great book, nonetheless. I mean, just because they're wrong in, in, in that kind of stuff doesn't mean they're evil people. It just means they've been, I hate to say it, they've been brainwashed. I always want to say, okay, Scott, how are you going to fly to Europe? Just tell me how are you going to do until you stop flying, I just don't want to hear it. So, so this started me off on a financial planning, uh, and I wrote, I read this in 2007, and everyone needs to get this book, Consumption Smoothing, and I, I just can't believe what I'm about to share with you. All right, part two, hold on a second. Follow that up with this one from Frederick Vitez, uh right there. Frederick Vitez, I'll put links in the show notes, and if you buy them from my link, I make that huge, huge Amazon commission, 4% or maybe 2%. So for every 10 bucks you spend, I get 20 cents. Yes. Anyway, so this is this is book will dwarf everything you've ever read on retirement planning. And uh, he's got a new book out too. So this is, look, A Contrarian's Perspective, The Essential Guide. And who is Frederick? He's an actuary who did pension stuff for real life in his career. The actuaries don't know math and how to run numbers. No one does. These two books alone are really all you need. And then you throw in a Bogle book in there too, which I'll, you know, link in the show notes. All right, so let's just go and we're going to destroy this one by one by one because it's uh, it's really bad. <laughs> it's stunt. I, literally, I was reading, what, again, one of y'all sent this to me. I was like, Larry Kolokov wrote this? Has he been taken prisoner by the uh, by Putin? Because this is insanity. Oh, you know he's been taken prisoner by. He's been taken prisoner by the uh, financial industry. Because they want you to work longer and save more. I mean, it literally reads directly from Fidelity. It's crazy. As an, and we're just going to read it. And I hopefully I'm not, you know, what's the thing? Um, what's the word they say? Uh, where they say, oh, you can't write. That's from CNBC. And I hope they don't uh, put a this thing on my YouTube channel that says, you can't talk about this. What the hell's it called, man? It's called uh, Trademark. Uh, not Trademark. Well, whatever. All right, after pulling punches, but as an economist, pulling punches isn't in my DNA. So I'll be blunt. For most Americans, early retirement isn't just a decision to take the longest vacation of their lives. It's one of the biggest mistakes they'll regret. We as a group are lousy savers, making early retirement unaffordable. So let's read what the lousy saver is here, shall we? Forget this. Larry's article is written just the other day. This one is from 2021. It's from Lexington Law. Americans lack savings as a result of poor financial ab education. Yeah, we need more uh, woke teachers that tell us how to save. Oh, uh, by the way, I talk about the lack of savings uh, that everyone talks about in my book. You can retire on Social Security. So get this too, man. And I got that links in my thing. Because I talk about the lack of savings that everyone decries and how just fake it is, man. Um, I mean, um, I'll come back. I don't want to get off tangent. And I know I am. Sorry. It's just the nature of my beast. All right, so let's read what these guys say, shall we? So remember, Larry says we're horrible savers. All right, so and he quotes, he cites this article. Nearly three in five Americans have less than 5000 in savings. Okay. 37% of Americans are saving towards an unspecified goal. Okay. Now here's where they throw you a curveball. Only 14% of people under the age of 54 considered retirement savings a priority. What the hell is that? Only three in five have... have uh, Wait, wait, say three and five have less than five thousand dollars in savings, and only uh fourteen percent of people under the age of fourteen consider retirement under the age of fifty four consider retirement savings a priority. That's two completely different things: retirement savings versus savings, and will make it even more confusing. Uh, let's take a look, um, right here. Uh, how often do you take money out of your savings account? Over half Americans reported they never removed money from a savings account. 
Huh? So when they say a savings account, what, what does that mean to you? That means you're literally your local bank was called a, uh, a DBA, your local de demand deposit account, the bank. I don't look at my savings accounts, my retirement savings. In fact, they talk about it a little bit different here. Two in five Americans have less than $1,000 in savings at the bank because it says right there. How much money do Americans have in their savings account? What? Despite many Americans knowing the importance of saving, our survey found that almost half Americans have less than five, a thousand bucks in their account. And then they throw this in here. This is why I say, how did Larry, Larry Kolokoff knows this? This is freaking nuts, dude. In order to live comfortably, experts say your retirement income should be 80% of your pre-retirement salary. What the hell is Larry Kolokoff doing citing that? He's the one who developed the consumption smoothie thing to begin with. Ah! On top of it says savings account. Savings account is exclusive for retirement accounts. Ah! It drives me crazy. I'm going nuts because Larry Kolokoff knows this. And I'm saying, why are you citing that, Larry? So we as a group are lousy savers. For what, Larry? For savings or for retirement? And we're not. Just go back to my book here. I just want to share with you something else, by the way. The personal savings rate from the Fed. All right. And you're going to say, oh my good, 10%, 11%. And now it's down to 7.9. All right. So we got, oh my goodness, look at this. Personal savings rate. It's only 4.3, 3.2. Oh my goodness. And right here, you can see though, it's basically about 5 to 7%, if you will. Man, maybe 5 to, let's see. Yeah. So we look at this. So we got over 10% until what? About 1983. Huh. Interesting. Anything happened in 1983? Hmm. Anything happened with 1983? That's yeah, when Reagan signed the Social Security uh, thing. All right, so anyway, so you can see Social Security, by the way. You remember Social Security? Have you followed the tax rates on Social Security? Do I need, you need to read my book, man. You need to read my book. So I just, I freaking debunk all this crap. But anyway, so Social Security tax rates change in 1983, and we have lower and lower and lower savings rate. Why? But we still have 6.2 on the on your side as an employee and 6.2 on your employer side as an employer. So it's still 12.4, a 12.4% 12 yeah, for your personal savings rate when it comes to your pension being Social Security. All right. So then we've seen it go back up. So obviously from 1980 to 2000, it was going down as the markets were going up. I don't know. But anyway, personal savings rate, even don't you, this is just an outlier, but even right here, 7.2%, 7.9%, even if it's just 5%. If you add 5% your personal savings rate, and then on top of that, you take Social Security on their end and Social Security on your end, that's almost that's over 12.4, that's almost 18%. I talk about my book, and this is chapter, uh, oh, right here. In fact, I'll show you from my book right here, Table 27. Uh, tax rates as a percentage of taxable income. So 19... Uh, 68, you pay 3.8 to OASDI and 4.4, uh, uh, 0.6, excuse me, to HI, hospital insurance. So 1968, right here, 11.7 was a personal savings rate. And yet by then you were only paying 3.8 to Social Security and 0.6% uh, to HI, which is Medicare. Look at this. Now there was no Medicare in 1963. So 1963, your savings rate to Social Security, your tax rate was only 3.625. All right. Where is it now? It's almost that. Silly. So to say, oh, my goodness. All right. So, by the way, in 19, what's it? 1959, the Social Security tax is 2.5. So you see something here? As the Social Security tax goes up, the savings rates go down. Shocking, huh? Then we go right here. 1988. Hmm. Shocking. Your, your Social Security was at... Uh, 5.7. So basically from 1983, which is when Reagan signed the Social Security thing, you're, you're uh, right there. 9.1 was your savings, personal savings rate, and the Social Security tax is 5.4. All right. 1989 and above, guess what it is? 6.2 on top of 1.45 to Medicare. So you're paying 6, 7.65 is going out the door right out of the gate. So to compare the personal savings rate now compared to where it was, it's just stupid because where it was before is you had more money which to save. Ah, drive me to wall. All right, let's keep going. All right, so then we got it. According to our Boston College report, Center for Retirement Research, who are the biggest negative millies there are, half of today's working families risk a major living standard decline in retirement. That share would drop by 50% if all workers retire uh, two years earlier. Oh, my goodness. Half of America's... Working families face a major living standard decline if they uh, and uh, and if they retire two er, 
two years earlier, 50% would retire, uh, the share would drop by roughly half if people retire two years later, excuse me. So basically 25% of the population is facing a major living standard decline. And if you retire two years earlier, 50% of the population is facing a major living standard decline. We'll get in that here in just a second. Okay, I want to show you something. Of course, there are situations where retiring early is a great option. Mm -hmm. All right. Still, almost two-thirds of people between the ages of 57 uh, and 66 have chosen to retire early out of their own volition, despite having saved next to nothing. We have saved next to nothing. So where is he getting that from? Where's he getting that from? Oh, he's looking at that stupid article from Lexington Law that says you don't have $5,000 in your savings account. I, I just, I can't, this is not Larry Kolokoff. I'm sorry, it's not. He knows this. He's got, if you, well, this, well, I tell you, he's an economist from uh, BU. That's where AOC got her economics degree. Maybe we're starting to see something there, huh? Maybe BU econo economists are uh, just freaking jumping into a big pile of, any steaming you know what so let's read this article shall we because almost two-thirds of people chose to choose to retire out of their own volition let's see what we got shall we and by the way i love this website dqydj i have no idea that's a hard website to remember i'm sure it means something to this guy but this is a great website and a great article it's still dateline 2018 the average retirement age among currently living retirees was 59.88 years hmm the median living retiree left work at 62 years old, and the most common age to retire was 62. The average retiree in age, the average and the median, two completely different things, but we'll look at it's about 60, and that's 62. Interesting. So the first thing that comes to mind is like, whoa, if they're retiring at 60, and the earliest to collect Social Security is 62, where are they getting their money from? Well, let's keep going down here. All right, so this is important, all right? The average retirement age for men in the United States. In 2017, there are 22 million retired men in the United States. 45.26% of all retirees. On average, these men retired at 59 years old. All right. The median male retiree, the median, left work at 62. So what would be the difference there? We'll talk about it. And again, 62 is the most common age. 54% of all retirees are the ladies. All right. And their average was also the median was 62. Interesting. 62, first year you can uh, eligible for Social Security. According, though, uh, according to what I, I don't even know what that is, uh, but there are 49 million retirees in the U.S. Interestingly enough, 61.9% currently retired Americans waited until their 60s or later to retire. 15% waited until at least their full retirement age. But remember, in 2017, retired men were 45, I mean, 22 million men lived in, retired men lived in the U.S. And 26, basically 27 million women were uh, lived in the U.S., retired women. However, it's important to know we're only looking at retired men and women. Even at older age, many Americans are still in the workforce of the retired population. So see how this is skewed. Skewed. Some people are still working. Why are people retiring early? Well, let's go down to it. When do people retire in the United States? Well, let's take a look. If you're still working or concerned with, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, although the data above suggests the average age for the various American retiree populations might not be the full answer. While this methodology is correct, it's still biased. If you're still working or you're concerned with policy demographics, you probably want to know the average retirement age for all workers. Yes. Additionally, due to ill health and death, surveying current retirees displays survivorship bias towards healthy and people enough to respond. Isn't that interesting? Although people in poor health may die within a year or two of retirement. Yes, the population had an average retirement age of 62.66 and the median retirement age was 63. All right. What age did healthy people retire? Although poor health is a, isn't the only factor that can force people to retirement, it is one of the big factors. Of living retirees, 34.7% said health was very or uh, important or something retired. So do you see what's going on here? Uh, basically, a lot of people retire early because they're in bad states. They're in a bad way. And what do they do? I'm talking to lady right now. She's working my man Skip Ritchie to get on Social Security Disability because she literally is in a world of hurt. So she's going to retire before the age of 60 because she is completely disabled. Not in a wheelchair, but she has lots of issues, man. 
She's over 55. She's under 60. So she'll get full retirement age Social Security and she'll get on Medicare. And trust me, she's a freaking hard worker. Not only hear anything, but ah, she's cooking the books. No, she's not. No, she's not. So if you're 56 years old and you're a bad way, you're going to file for Social Security disability. You might not get it. She got it initially denied. Denied. It's not fun to go through Social Security disability. It's not. So I don't want to hear it, man. Just get out of here if you're like, ah, other people cook the books. Well, welcome. I guarantee you cooked the books at one point in your life, too. I guarantee. So give people a break. Point being, when it comes to healthy people retiring, and you got to separate the two. Healthy people retiring, and you got to look at non-healthy people retiring. Why are people retiring early? Because they're not healthy, and their likelihood not going to be that long-lived. In fact, this case, we're only expecting 10 years. All right. Uh, all right, so what about those people who retired recently but didn't consider their health reasons? Oh, the average age was 63, and the median was 63. All right, isn't that interesting? Proving that health matters quite a bit in retirement decisions. Yes, exactly. So... Point being is, um, I want to show you something in a second. They're controlling for survivorship bias. Recent retirees have a higher retirement age than all retirees. Healthy retirees work longer than non-healthy retirees. The Social Security makes a big difference. Larry didn't read that article because he says we're retiring right here. Two-thirds of people between the ages of 57 and 66 cho choose to retire in a little volition despite having saved next to nothing. It, he's, he's complete speculation. That should not happen from a, a well-trained well, a, 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 a well comps. All right, let's keep going. We're not done yet. Uh, take the boomer, uh, take the baby boomers, the 76 million strong. Uh, almost half of them have little, if any, savings. Oh, boomers face retirement crisis, says Bob, Pis Bob Pisani, again over at CNBC, where Jim Cramer says he wants the military to come at you if you're not vaxxed. Screw Jim Cramer and all this crap right here. Uh, let's see what we're going to read here. Oh, the Insured Research or Retirement Institute that people advocating for news. I got no qualm with news. I just find it funny. All right, let's see right here. Let's focus on baby boomers. Those uh, between 55 and 73, nearly half are already in retirement, which means 53% are not. Okay. That's 34 million retired baby boomers. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's take a look. The three legs of retirement school stool are Social Security, private pensions, and personal savings. Like, just because they've been saying that doesn't mean it's true. The vast majority of people didn't have pensions, man. Just get me in the old days. Stop with that. I talk about that in my book, too. Get the freaking book. All right. Uh, let's see. The average, social, the average Social Security check is 14000 a year. What does that have to do with you? I, I don't give two craps what your average Social Security check is. I care what my Social Security check is. Only 23% of boomers expect to receive an income from a pension plan. Okay. And only 38% of boomers expect a pension at all, just like the old days. As for personal savings, I'll make it simple. Most baby boomers have not saved enough. Hmm. Really? How do you know? Uh, in the worst case, it's really bad. 45% of boomers have zero savings for retirement. Is that true, Bob? Is that true? 45% of boomers have nothing saved for retirement. Where is the evidence? Oh, and that Lexington Law thing, which says savings account, ex explicitly state savings account. Oh, and Larry Kolokoff, do we need to go back and look at the freaking Social Security Administration and how they identify income from 2017 facts and figures, which I did a video I reposted from 2018, and one of you has said it's the same thing in 2021. The consumer, not the consumer, the uh, CPS, the current population survey under state's income. Because the freaking question they ask the survey is very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Confusing. It would lead, it leads you. It's a leading question that makes it sound like taking only, uh, only taking RMDs or pension income is income. But taking sporadic distributions from your IRA, they don't, they don't talk about that. So if I'm just taking a $10,000 vacation to go to freaking Mexico, but I took it from my IRA, it's not a planned distribution in terms of required distribution. The, the census, the current population survey doesn't make that known. It says, and it says explicitly, read the questions, Larry, read them. You'll say, yeah, that doesn't make sense. I remember reading this back in 2012. It said, that makes sense. What do they talk about for just unplanned distributions? In terms of, I want to take 10,000 bucks. It's not there. And two, we've been, five years have gone by. And they still haven't addressed it. It still says explicitly in the Social Security Administration's facts and figures, it says explicitly right there, based on the census population, current population survey is jacked up. We're not using it because we understate income. Crazy. All right. Uh, many simply don't understand the system. Shockingly, 50% of those in the survey say have not factored in the cost of long-term care because they will rely on Medicare. Well, that Medicare doesn't pay for extended long-term care, but it does pay for 90 days to 100 However, Medicare provides no coverage for long-term care. Yes, it, it kind of does, but it doesn't for long-term care. It doesn't. 
Uh, only 8% of boomers said they had purchased long-term care policy. All right. Um, show me there, Bob. Where is the evidence that says we all need long-term care? Where is it? I just want to see it. Oh, I'm showing you a fidelity study that says the average couple needs $386,000 for healthcare costs, and that doesn't include long-term care. Oh, I'm going to show you a general study that says, oh, I wonder if I talk about that in my book. Yeah, I do. You know why? Because I've heard all this crap before, and it freaking ticks me off. Fake news, man. We're going to live a lot longer than we think. Are we, Bob? Are we really? In fact, about half of all married couples over 65, one partner will survive to 95. How many people are actually married over 65 anymore? Is that true? I'm going to, I'm going to do another no, I'll just show it to you here. Not that one right here. Not that one right there. This one right here. Huh. Death of all causes in the U.S. From, and I'm going to do another video on this, too, because everyone thinks they're going to live to the 100. It's not going to happen. Everyone thinks they're going to live to 95. It's not going to happen. Everyone thinks they're going to live to 90. It's not going to happen. Death by all causes. Look at this. So you, what's happening here is basically we've leveled off. So everyone says, we're going to live to 100. Well, in uh, 1950, 1,446 people died per 100,000 population. Fast forward to 2018 and 723. Fast forward to 2017 and 731, 728. And it's going to be up this last year because of the, uh, the, the pandemic and the, uh, the, the stuff that was related around the stupidity of that. This is flattening out. You can see, so right here, 2008, 774, 2018, uh, 723. The vast majority of gains in longevity has already been had. It's already been had. And I'm going to show you in a different video I, I want to show you because it's all, well, we'll get into it. But remember, when it comes to life expectancy, you got to look at what your age is because life expectancy in of itself is from a baby being born today. And the reason life expectancy was so low back in the old days is because babies were dying. Uh, without question, huge amounts of babies died. The mortality rate for infants were through the roof. And as such, the life expectancy was low. Now that we've got that situated, you can see it's leveling off here. And we'll get into this in a different detail. All right. Underestimating retirement income. The average amount spent by Americans ah, is 55000 a year. The average amount spent by Americans who are 65 and 74 is 55000 a year. Interesting. And again, that's not applicable to you. I just find it funny. All these people are scared, fear. Oh, my goodness. We're all going to be broke. But most baby boomers don't think they'll need anywhere that amount. All right. So they say, let's take a look. Uh, 26 plus 42% think they'll need uh, about 55000 a year. 44% think they'll need less than 35000 a year. Well, I don't know where they get where they get that. I don't, well, I'm going to show you where they got that. Don't you worry. We're going to look into this. What will you do if you run out of money? I'll uh, downsize, live on Social Security loan, return to work, ask children for assistance. Huh, interesting. Uh, the part about returning to work is already happening. One third of employed baby boomers are, are have postponed retirement. Did they have they really postponed retirement? One third have postponed retirement. Going back to what Larry said, well, that can't be because one third, does that mean they have to? Huh, I don't know. All right, so hey, let's take a look because uh, I want to show you this other uh, thing he posted here. This is going to be, this will make you laugh. If this video is too long, don't care. I got to get off my chest. Let me find it here. See, the median. So here is Larry saying, indeed, almost half have no little, if any, savings. We'll already nipped down the butt. Uh, indeed, their median wealth is just 144000 Really? That's median wealth, Larry. Huh. Median wealth. Huh. If they had significant private, state, or local pensions to rely on, things would look better, but they don't. So the median wealth, what does that tell you? Your median wealth is just 144000 is it now, Larry? So let's take a look at a very diverse group, by the way, very diverse. All right, so let's take a look. So this is from the study he just cited from Transamerica, another insurance provider. All right, so check this out. We're going to go, we're going to type in up here. We're going to type in Control F, median, and we're going to come down. Oh, median wealth. Okay, well, was it? Uh, Hold on a second. We'll find it. We'll come back. We'll come back. Hold on a second. Point out that this, again, it, I, Larry didn't read this stuff because there's no way he would have linked to it. Here is emergency savings are alarmingly low. Millennial workers have saved 3000 Generation has, X has 5000 Baby boomers had median $15,000 in emergency savings. That's not retirement accounts. Emergency savings. If you're a millennial and you got 3000 bucks saved, good to you, man. Uh, I got no qualm with that. Again, emergency savings. Emergency savings. 29% report having less than 5,000 emergency savings. Now, just come on, Larry. You can't kill me. Hold on a second. All right. So let's take a look at this. Retirement savings may not be adequate. Total household retirement savings. Total household retirement savings. Baby boomers 
have the highest retirement savings median of $144,000. Household retirement savings, Larry. Household retirement savings. Huh. $144,000 bucks in retirement savings plus $15,000 in emergency accounts. And what did Larry say? What did he say? Indeed, their median wealth is just one forty-four. What is that missing? In fact, I was stunned to hear this because Larry sat on a conference call with Tom Dixon talking about da -da 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 -da, reverse mortgages. It doesn't include your home equity. Median wealth would be median liquid wealth. That's not your median wealth. Net worth. Net worth is what? Assets minus liabilities. Net worth. Assets are what? A house. Crazy. All right, so I want to show you something else here. So we're going to go back to this because it, it's freaking nuts. This whole study just blows up Larry's own argument. I, and again, there's no way he wrote this. I'm sorry. So let's go. Study said, what, was, what words, what do you want to do in retirement? And Mo said, we expect to improve our quality of life in retirement. 55% expect their enjoyment of life to improve when they retire, while 32% expect it to stay the same. So 87% say their quality of life will stay the same or improve in retirement. Huh. Workers are dreaming of an active retirement. Traveling, 65% is workers' most frequently cited retirement dream, followed by spending more time with family, pursuing hobbies. A noteworthy one-third of workers dream of doing some form of paid work in retirement, such as starting a business, pursuing an encore career, or continuing to work in the same field. 24% dream of doing volunteer work. Huh. Did you hear that, Larry? Did you hear that? A noteworthy uh, 17% or one third of workers dream of doing some form of work for cash in retirement. Where is that in your studies? In fact, I would say it's even more of that. And or continue to work in the same field. That's uh, 28, no, that's 40% right there. 40%, <clears throat> one third of workers dream of doing some form of paid work retirement. If 17% is starting a business, 12% start, that's 29%, and 11%, uh, that's 40%, say they're still gonna make an income. So let me ask old Larry, I got a customer. Uh, he lives in Texas. He's got a friend who owns a bait and tackle shop. He's going to go work for him part-time. He's probably making 15 bucks an hour, 15 hours a week. All right. Is that work? Yeah. Is he still retired? Of course he is. So if he's working 15, so uh, if he's working, hold on a second. So 37 times 20, he's going to work 780 hours for this guy. We'll just say he's making 15 bucks an hour. He's going to make $11,700 in retirement. Oh, my goodness, but he's not really retired. I get all kinds of people snipe at me and say, Say, so yeah, get a part-time job, man. I mean, I plan on working at a nursery. I love talk, talking to people about their gardens and stuff. I love it. I'm pretty good at it. Um, making 10, 15 bucks an hour, being outside in the sun, helping people out, helping Grammy move the trees to her freaking truck and stuff. It's going to be great. Well, you're not retired, then you're still working. That, see, that's freaking stupid. I get that. People snipe at me all the time. Well, if they're still working, even as part-time, they're not retired. Yeah, they are. You know what I'm saying? Weird how none of this gets included in the equation, isn't it? That 11700 bucks is inherently 11700 bucks he won't need to pull from his retirement account. And it's 11700 bucks he won't need to pay taxes on by having to pull from his retirement account. Will he have to pay tax on it? Sure. It'll be earned income. He'll have to pay TICA, FICA. He won't have to pay state income tax, but he's going to have to pay a little bit of Fed tax. What did he do? All right, let's keep going down here. 57% of workers plan to work after retirement, including 40% who are uh, plan to work part-time and 17% full-time. Just 26% do not plan to work after retirement and 17% are sure. So going back to Bob's article, oh my goodness, you're not going to have $55,000 a year in income. That's what you expect where it's going to come. You're going to get 11700 right here from freaking working at the fish stop. 40% say they want to phase in retirement. They're going to phase transition. Thirds of workers are confident about retirement. Approximately 7 in 10 workers are either somewhat or very confident they will be able to retire fully with a comfortable lifestyle. Huh, can't have that, right guys? Can't have people with comfortable retirement. That would destroy the financial planning business. <sighs> three and four workers are concerned about Social Security. Yeah, okay. And it says right here, three and four workers are saving for retirement. I, I mean, the way this is the, uh, from... <laughs> 
Boston College Center for Retirement Research from Alicia Monell and a couple other places, uh, ladies or guys. June 2006, a little bit antiquated there, Lair. A new re National Retirement Risk Index. I've already smoked this in other videos. I'm not going to get into it because I'm already 30 minutes and 15 seconds into this. I just, this, I, there's no way Larry had written this. But he, he's got to know. Basically saying half a family, half of today's working families face a major living standard decline in retirement. I, I know I do, and I can't wait. I'll tell you why here in just a second. All right, so he talks a whip. Uh, Social Security average benefit, that's just a stupid number to put on. Um, the failure of most to save reflects a misfocus on life expectancy, which is routinely used to set one's planning horizon. Half a 50 year old will live beyond uh, 80. A quarter will make it to age 90. Huh, interesting. Half of 50, year old, 50 years old will live uh, until they're 80. A quarter of you who are 50 right now will live to your 90, which means 75% will not. And if I think I got, I'm going to show you these numbers I got here. Um, I'll, I'll do another video on this because it's, it's just, it's, look, man, if, let's put it this way. If I'm a gambler, I'll take 75% odds any day of the week. All right, I'll bet Larry 100 times out of 100 to say, all right, um, you know, we got, we're going to 75 will die before 90, 25 will die after, will live till 90. All right, so let's gamble on those odds. It will take a, a group of a thousand people. I guarantee the vast majority will die before they're 90 and I'll win big time and he'll lose. But I don't want to gamble on me specifically. Okay, well don't then, keep working, that's fine. However, the likelihood of you dying well before you're 90 is quite high. And I'm gonna do another video on that here because it's just, it freaking ticks me off. All right, uh, let's see. And then he uses, this is where I know it wasn't there. There's no way, this right here. To understand what adequate savings really involves, take Jane. She's seven, she's single and she's only 40. She plans to retire and take Social Security at 62, and she earns $75,000 a year. And she does have a savings account of $150,000 in inheritance. She could live to be 100 Could she, Larry? Let's just take, ah, do I have it up here? I don't know if I, hold on a second. I'm going to show you the live to 100 She expectancy for all races and, orange in the, and origins in the U.S. If you're 40, she's only, her life expectancy is 80.7 years, 40 more years. She's a woman, so it's going to be a little bit higher, 42. Her life expectancy is 82. The, the likelihood she makes it to 100 is so small to be actually silly to plan for that. I, I, as an economist, he's got to know this, man. That's just as stupid. I'm surprised that he's falling for this. Anyway, her retirement could last that long, uh, could last longer than if she works. If she lives to 100, she needs to save 28% of her take-home pay each year through retirement. How do we get that? Well, I'm sure we ran Larry's Social Security, and he assumes that she's going to need 75000 a year once she hits 62. Where's that assumption come from? Which is the whole thing about the consumption spending. Let me just go back at you. I got not one, not two, not three, but four children. All right. Two, one's in college now is getting ready to graduate from Georgia Tech. Another's getting ready to go to UGA. Got two boys coming up, the, up behind. I hope they don't go to college because college is, you're getting educated like this, which is nuts. And I'm sorry if this sounds like I'm bashing Larry. How many people are reading this article right here and are like sitting there at the crap deal job going to keep working? They're going to die at their office. It's freaking nuts because Larry knows this. He knows better. And this is freaking nay, naysaying crap that I get from Teresa Gerald Geldes and the, the new school people should not come from an esteemed economist uh, who had written the book, Spend Till the End with Consumption Smoothing. All right, so I got a mortgage. I got car insurance. got home insurance. I got freaking life insurance. got utilities. got three girls in here, all right? Three girls when I use a utility to, to uh, blow dry their hair. That's expensive, my friends. We got pretty significant cell phone bills. We got pretty significant hair bills for the girls because when you're using heating on electricity, that's a big drain on your kilowatt hour cost. All this stuff. We got freaking one, two, three TVs with cable. I'm not going to have any of that crap. I got feed six people, a lot of times seven, because sometimes one of Charles' uh, brothers or sisters will be staying with us. Uh, the, 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 the house, the property taxes, the income tax, the, the self-employment tax, all that is through the roof. What happens when I hit 60 years old and all the kids are out of the house? I'm going to sell this house. We're going to downsize like a freaking mofo. Property tax go down, health insurance costs go down, life insurance costs is gone. We're going to have uh, cell phones, the kids will be on it. Uh, homeowner's insurance will be gone. My, I, look, I don't buy any clothes anyway. You know, I'll buy a t-shirt like my main uh, uh, defending gun rights, uh, gun owners of Maine shirt. You know what I'm saying? Well, that I don't buy. I still like these sweatpants I'm in now are probably freaking at least 10 years old. I, come on. 
But you're gonna have higher health care costs. Well, that's why you get a Medicare supplement, man. At least you know that your out of cop pocket expenses under Medicare is a certain amount. You know, same thing with Obamacare. So why would I need the amount of money I need now? I don't. And Jane won't either. And Larry's gotta know this. And just throwing a number of seventy five thousand a year and adjusting it for inflation without knowing what goes in, that's just is is weak. She has saved nothing. She's counting on Social Security and her 401k. What if she takes Social Security at 70? Good move. This raises her lifetime spending by over 10%. Unfortunately, she has saved nothing. If she continues to do so, her post-retirement living standard will be half her pre-retirement living standard. Well, that's going to be me. I'm okay with that. The answer is to delay retirement. As for me, because here's Larry, you know, basically going to make you mad. I'm 70. Fortunately, I have tenure and can keep my job doing research, writing books, and columns, and teaching. Why is Boston University paying to write books, columns, teaching, and do research? What, what Shouldn't there be a limit on what professors can do here? I think. My current plan is to die in the saddle, of course, is, which means new economists aren't coming up behind Larry because he's taking up the job that's out there. My work is just too rewarding. Yeah, okay, so he's uh, rubbing it in there. And you can hear Finney's not happy with Larry. All right, so the point being is, must be like uh, my man Owen Benjamin, must be nice. Must be nice to stay to 71 and like your work and still get paid a cushy job just because you're tenured. Most, it's just, it's, it's a haves and haves nots, my friends. We are the haves, though, because we see the reality. And sadly, Larry, he is, I don't understand where he's going wrong here. It's nuts, nuts, nuts. Get my book. Hell, get Larry's book. And get this book right here. The idea is 80% retirement freaking stupid. I just, it's dumb. All right. Love your thoughts. If you stung out for this whole thing, I appreciate it. Put a comment in the show notes. See what you say. Thanks. Now.